Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, here's coming, hey, Ms. Lindsay. Hey, Mr. Bergman. We're going to be learning about the uh, types of minerals today. Yep. So there's different kinds of minerals, and this graphic looks like there's just two types. So there, there are just two types. That's easy. I can remember two types. That's not too hard. There's silicate and non-silicate. Silicate. Exactly. Sounds like the word silicon. Silicon? And silicon is an element on the periodic table. There's that much silicon. Con in the world. There is. Lots of this stuff. Okay, so what is a silicate? So let's talk about the first category. Well, silicate is silicon and oxygen together. Okay, uh, that makes sense. So silicon and o oxygen is the most abundant element in the Earth's crust. Now, wait a second. I thought that's the most abundant element in the Earth's atmosphere. And the Earth's crust. But actually, it's not the most element. And a lot of people think, by the way, that atmosphere is filled most with oxygen. It's actually filled mostly nitrogen. with nitrogen. But... Um, nitrogen is inert and doesn't really help us that much. I mean, that's not completely true. But okay, so oxygen, it's, so it's most abundant. And so the silicon gets together somehow with the oxygen in some sort of like a chemical bondy thing. Yes. All right. But they do it lots of ways. Lots of ways. The basic is the tetrahedral shape. Tetrahedral. Oh, I remember that from chemistry class, right? That's this shape, guys, yeah. right? The tetrahedral shape. Remember that from chemistry class? That would be awesome. All right, so when we look at the silicon, silicate, silica tetrahedron, what do we got going on here? So, so the, oh, there's that tetrahedron. I just drew that. There's the tetrahedron. That. You can see the, the gray ones are the silicons, and the red ones are the oxygens. All right, so the middle guy, that's the SI, and yep. then here these are the O's. Yep. So it looks like in a quartz, they just kind of keep going on and on with this sort of never-ending pattern. They do. So that's how quartz works. And then then you've got other options. Wait, wait, what are, what are these? Explain this and this. you got double chains and sheets and what the heck is all this? Well, you know with Legos you can make all kinds of different shapes. Yeah. With the silicate ion, you can make all kinds of different shapes. But crystals. you're always starting with the tetrahedron. Yes. And then I can rearrange it in different ways. And I can make these. So, like, are these all the same chemicals or they're... What's the difference? Well, they do have some different elements added to them besides the silicate. Yeah. Some have iron, okay. some have magnesium, some have calcium. Okay. And, yep. So there's the silicates. Oh, is there some more silicates? All right, now we've got a, a now it's getting really complex. Yeah, here. now you can look at some of the chemical compounds on the left and you can see that uh, they while well, they have that basic silicate. So this SiO4. is an independent tetrahedron, but this one, the olivine group, has magnesium and iron in yes. it. Okay. And the pyroxene group has the more chains. That's cool. Augite. Yeah. And also has magnesium and iron. But notice here SiO4, SiO3. So slightly different. A little bit different. And, but they connect each other in a different way. Yes. The amphiboly group. Right. Ampho Amphiboly. 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 <laughs> like an amphibian. Like an amphibian. Okay. Oh, and this is different, like a circle deal. Very right? different. The chains. Yes. And then we've got one, pl one plane. So this one's going to be planar, right? F fo am I doing that? I'm trying to draw this very well. And then there'll be another plane on top. I'm not doing a very good job. And there's a gap between. I think exactly. it's more like hexagonal, and I didn't do a very good job. This one has potassium in it. It does. I see potassium, and this one has potassium and aluminum in it. Yes. Oh, this one has aluminum, too. So these are similar, but all kinds of weird chemical co That looks more complex than when I learned naming chemistry compounds. It's a lot more complex. Wow. This looks complex stuff. And then three-dimensional, where there's like one whole big one. That's where the quartz is. Yes. I think that's because that's the one of the harder ones because of the it is an internal structure. Folks, we didn't really talk about this much, but this is all based on covalent bonds. You got serious strong covalent bonds. That's why quartz is so strong. Here, you're gonna also have some London forces between the things, and that makes them a bit weaker and less hard, I guess. Right. Exactly. All right. So that's the silicates and the non-silicates. All right. Now you didn't really tell me the truth. You said there were two types. I there's a two bit. types. The yeah. non-silicates. There's like six types of the non-silicates. So there's really seven types. There's a lot of non-silicates. Yes. Okay. So, but silicates are their own category because they're just the, so dominant in the world. Exactly. Okay. So we're now let's talk about each of these real fast. All right. The first ones are the carbonates. Carbonates. Now I remember from chemistry what a carbonate is. Carbonate is CO three negative two. You guys remember exactly. that? Exactly. That's the carbon. So these are ones that contain carbonate. Yay, those polyatomic ions. Now, isn't that the same ones we did just a little bit ago? We added acid? We did. Because if you add acid, like HCl, if you recall that, plus a carbonate, 
that makes carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. And that gas gives off and it bubbles. This is the bubbly ones. Marble. Okay, so if I were to take acid and put it on a statue, that wouldn't be good. No, they, the museum might get upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, actually, this is an issue with acid rain, folks, in parts of the world, is that, is that the marble statues are deteriorating in the acid rain. Not a good thing at all. All right, so the next one is, we just jumped a bunch just because I was not doing those. Okay, non-silicates. Uh, halides. Halides is another one. All yeah. right, these are the salty ones. That's the one I tasted last time that tasted salty. Very salty. Okay, so, um, okay, good. We need lots of salt. We do. All right, good. Although we usually eat too much. Gypsum. Now, I know what gypsum is. That's the stuff that we use in drywall. It is. So this is the drywall stuff. So what, what's indicative of these particular minerals? Uh, these are sulfates. And you can see oh. the chemical formula in the picture on the right has calcium sulfate. Ah, there you go. Calcium sulfate. But these are the, anything that has sulfate is a gypsum. There's multiple yes. kinds of gypsum. There are multiple gypsums. Ah, yes. that makes sense. Okay. And uh, now what about these other... So what's the point of this slide? Well, we really, even though silicates are the most common, silicates common. Okay. we use the non-silicates a lot more. So the non-silicates are actually more valuable. Yes. Ah, they have more economic value. Okay. Uh, other ones, we haven't talked about oxides. Right. So iron oxide, we oh. use that a lot. Oh, iron ore. So we can make, exactly. we can get iron out. All right. Yeah. Like the old Iron Age, think of history, that's where this all came from. They found like deposits of iron ore and they figured out how to get the iron out of it and make weapons and plows and things right yeah and then the sulfides now actually i'm thinking about this all right these are really just chemistry terms they are oxides are o negative two sulfides are s negative two there's galena so that's how you get lead so lead was important like we used to make pipes and stuff out of it we've discovered that's not such a hot way to yeah, do things yeah not really okay and but then zinc but zinc zinc sulfide is very and, important yeah and, and zinc and chocopyrite chocopyrite Choco pyrite. That's a cool name. That's how we get copper. We talked about that exactly. in a previous video about the copper mines, right? Right. And then native elements are awesome. Gold, silver, diamonds, fluorite. All right. They're very important. Yes. They all come out. When we say native elements, they just come out as they are. They're not chemically reacted with anything. Yeah. It's weird is that, is that, for example, gold, remember gold is symbol AU in chemistry land, is that gold is just found in nature by itself. It's super uh, prized and valuable and useful too, actually, for, I mean, your computer has some gold in it. You probably didn't know that, but it does. Quite a bit. All right. So let's take a look real quickly at these. The oxides. So this is iron oxide. So this is the stuff that we make iron out of, right? Yes. We extract this, we do some stuff to it, and we get pure iron, and of course we use it for stuff. And magnetite, what do we use magnetite for? We played with that the other day. Well, we would use magnetite for magnets. So we make magnets out of magnetite? We do. Oh. All right, galena are the sulfides, so we're just some racing samples. through these. Yeah. Use some samples, now that's pretty. It's Galena is pretty. Because it's got like total, that, that, that looks like it's like made. It like, is. It's cool. Galena is beautiful, just, you know, somewhat toxic with the lead. Oh, it's got lead in it, and so don't sulfide. eat it. Yeah, don't, no, don't, don't lick it. it, no licking. But you can use this and make a uh, pure lead you to can. make a pipe or something like that, which we're not doing anymore. We make them out of plastics and stuff like that. Sulfides, oh, that's a pretty one. And that's what we can get copper from. Okay, you can get copper from that, good. So if I see that, maybe I can use it and I can sell it, you mm. know, to the manufacturer. Maybe. <laughs> gold, there's a vein of gold. Pure gold. That's awesome. So pretty. And silver, the same thing, huh? Silver, yep. Silver can come in veins as well. By the way, the reason that you find gold by itself is it has a, a stable electron configuration. It really comes back to, remember that 1s2 and 2s2 and 2p6 and all that stuff? That all is why that is. And then the diamond. Oh, yeah. Diamonds are awesome. Tell so me about diamonds. Diamonds are formed uh, as a pure crystal. It gets carbon crystallizing out in a different structure. Yeah, it's just pure carbon. Yeah. Here's the weird thing is that, as I forget, I just read this somewhere years ago. You can take peanut butter, which has a lot mostly carbon in it, and you can turn it into a diamond, given the right conditions. So that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? And fluorite, what is that? Fluorite is uh, a mineral, but it's used in something called flux, which is used to um, bond metals together okay. easily. All right. And what chemical is it if it's pure native element? Uh, Fluorite, um, I can't remember that one. Oh, okay, that's right. But Just curious. Yeah. Other ones? Uh, corundum is very hard. It's almost as hard as diamond. Wow. And then uranite, which is where we get uranium from. Okay, good, good. So that's our special mineral groups. We got the calcites, are we the silicates, and then the non-silicates. Yes. 
and we're good. And all these things you're seeing on the screen, ignore because <laughs> the computer went crazy. We'll see you in class. Bye.